if she had a terrible tragedy occur, I would live a monist, monistic lifestyle. He'll become a monk. Mike Bickle, the bunk. He's going to become a monk. That This is the script that they're going by. All right. The rest of my days. I don't know what that's all about. I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit about that in a second. It includes a chariot and flying into the throne of heaven. Such as Bob Jones really spoke. Now, Bob Jones, it's interesting. Bob Jones also claimed that he, by, he had the power by his faith. I thought, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get an impartation. And I, I remember talking with Bob in a restaurant about, you know, going into the heavens and what it was. And we were talking about. And in fact, that's in fact exactly correct by this person, third part, third party and armchair investigator is, is reaching out to Dr. Michael Brown. Dr. Michael Brown says, so when it says here, they, the Looney Tunes horoscope readers, cartoons is another one. I've done lots of videos regarding a, the inspired priest. You know, this is, all right, so we'll do that. If you don't know what the inspired priest is, this is the inspired priest. Which touches all as being the apostolic. And at that time, he gave me a prophetic word. He said, you've been operating. And this is the term he used. I'd never heard this before. He said, you've been operating as the inspired priest. And, and he, he went like this, the inspired priest, the, the prophet teacher, the teaching prophet, the pro prophetic teacher, you know, that, that thing. He said, but... Inside the throne of heaven by my Lord and Savior, Right? He's not prophesying the name of Buddha, Muhammad, Bahala, false religion leaders, false prophets, Joseph Smith, Ellen G. White. He's prophesying blasphemous lies in the name of my Lord and Savior. Buenos dias, mis amigos. Please support your local food bank and drug and alcohol center. This is an IHOP KC update. In fact, I've been doing updates following this since last year. A lot of the charismatic community, I'm with the Pentecostals, all right? They went silent. And uh, my my hope is that, and you know, it's interesting. A lot of people have commenting and are liking and sharing my videos and encouraging me to do these updates. There's Magnus. I'm a chess player. I'm a horrible chess player. Now, Magnus is a chess player. Sorry. Um, this is Mike Bickle, and this is IHOP KC. It's where I got my thumbnail with the picture of him. I'm excited to announce the Mike Bickle app. I didn't realize he had his own app. Filled out exclusive contact to find Mike Bickle library. And so they're still promoting uh, Mike Bickle as their apostle prophet. And... Um, is Mike Bickle planning a t comeback? We're going to look at that. This is a letter that was sent to Tammy Woods. This is a man named Ben Anderson. It just got posted yesterday. And this is a lady named... There's Beth. These are... This is Twitter. I've been following this sex scandal of Mike Bickle since last year. Joel Richardson, of course, is advocating for the women. And Elizabeth is also an advocate. She was actually in, involved with the videos that were posted by the advocate group. When we got this, this letter, I knew he's, that's Mike Bickle, planning a comeback. He needs whatever scraggly little band that would still follow him to believe the PH, I don't know what that means, PH Press, PH. Public, <laughs> comment below. What is PH Press? All right. Preserve at all costs. Angry face emoji. I'm glad the world can see him. See, Elizabeth knows. Elizabeth knows. She's advocating. She's part of Mr. Bowles, Mr. T, the lawyer. All right, let's read this. And um, this is Facebook. Um, this is Mr. Armchair Investigator, Ben Anderson. And uh, Ben Anderson, just hours before Tammy Woods' interview with the Kansas City Store, Mike Bickle sent her this script that he's preparing to use a video 
to be made with his wife, Diane, January 30th. All right. And this is it here. And just so everybody knows, this is on the official IHOP KC, where they're still promoting the Mike Bickle app, his books, teachings. We believe Mike Bickle sexually abused and manipulated Jane Doe and Tammy Woods. When, who was a minor at the time? His predatory and abusive actions are sick and violate the word of God, the marriage covenant, and holiness. We condemn their entirety and act in entirely. So the I, official IHOP KC has recognized now the main alleged Jane Doe and Tammy Woods. Jane Doe was 19. Now, this is, um, I have dyslexia, so if I read something wrong, forgive me. What's going on here? What if I could do that? There we go. All right. Mike Bickle's statement. First, I want to express the continual grief that I felt relating to what I shared in my personal statement December 12th about my failures that occurred years ago. I will... We'll talk about more in the future. That is not the purpose of this short video. I am making this video January 30th, two weeks ago. But the time in which I release this will be according to the honor and request of the leadership team and those giving me counsel. All right. A lot of people speculating online that they believe that Mike Bickle has continue to run the show in the background this whole time with the crisis managers, all the horrible decisions, all the cover up, the refusal to agree upon a agreed upon third party true investigation, all the cover up and misdirection. There's people speculating online. Mike Bickle's been running the show this whole time. He's the one, you know, his, you know. I help KC is Mike Bickle. It hasn't been my commitment for, it has been my commitment for 40 years not to defend myself. Can you see that? I'll get a bit bigger. There we go. Defend my actions. I have set my heart to walk in the com commitment in this crisis. In this video, I'm only making one statement. It is one that relates to our prophetic history and how it affects our lives. Who value it? I'm only speaking to this group, I am not speaking nor trying to persuade my accusers of anything. Right. And so if you're a new Christian, when the, the, the language of the accuser, the accusations, well, in the Bible we have, the accuser is Satan. I am only making one statement and it will be intended to benefit our staff to speak on how some of the family, friends, and supporters view the prophetic history, the involvement of IHOP KC. My statement, I have never told any woman God told me that Diane would die and God would tell me to marry her, them. Diane is the one who told me that she believed that she would die young. In the later years of my marriage, she was fore, foreboding sense that she would die young. We spoke about this several times. So I'm assuming when it says Diane, she this is her cue to agree with Mike Bickle's narrative that he's totally innocent, never said this once. And of course, we do know from all the women testifying on their testimonies that he used this as a prophecy weapon against them. Teenage girls, minors. Diane, yes, it's true. In the early years of my marriage, I so this is her script. I re reoccurring thoughts about this several women in our ministry died young and it triggered me mike and i spoke about this often i assure her i assure her if if such a terrible tragedy occur i would live in monolistic lifestyle the rest of my days oh i'm assuming this is mike this is their script for decades did i read that right i assured her okay so diane if she had a terrible tragedy occur, I would live a monist, monistic lifestyle. He'll become a monk. Mike Bickle, the bunk. He's going to become a monk. That This is the script that they're going by. All right. The rest of my days. For decades, I read about lives of people unusually devotion to Jesus, such as, oh boy, Bernard Clouet. 
Teresa Adler, David Brenninger, and many more. I did not agree with all their theology, but I am inspired by their love of Jesus. So this is the cue for Diane. For many years, he has read about our lives to people he mentioned. I remember how fasted, he, my fasted over the years. Poor Diane. You know, I, I actually pray for the, can, I encourage my viewers to pray for the Bickle family. They're all just being affected by this horrible sex scandal of Mike Bickle. And um, if I had the hardness of heart of total fabrication, such a horrible and evil statement as this, and repeat it often, then I would lead some to believe I made the testimony of a prophetic history that would horrible, horrible prophetic manipulation. All right. The false narrative of moment, see, God told me, calls into question the truthfulness of the prophetic history. So the prophetic history, if you don't know what that's all about, I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit about that in a second. It includes a chariot and flying into the throne of heaven. Such as Bob Jones really spoke. Now, Bob Jones, it's interesting. Bob Jones also claimed that he, by, he had the power by his faith. I thought, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get an impartation. And I, I remember talking with Bob in a restaurant about, you know, going into the heavens and what it was. And we were talking about the third heaven and it, going into the immediate abode, into that place of the dwelling place of God. And I thought, that's awesome. I was hungry for it, too. I wanted more because up until that point, sovereignly, God was just visiting me. And I was just waiting in his presence and sovereignly God was visiting me. And Bob said to me, he said, well, we can go right now. <laughs> And I said, I said, what do you mean we can go right now? Like, just we can make a decision right now and enter into that realm of the spirit. And he said, sure, we can. Don't you have faith, boy? Or something like that. Right. <laughs> That's what he said to me. And I remember Bob took my hand and uh, everyone else at the table. I don't know how many, maybe 20, 30 other people were yakking at the table. It was quite noisy. A lot of other leaders there. And Bob just takes my hand like this. And he says, all right, here we go. And he says, close your eyes. And I remember closing my eyes and Bob saying, okay, there it is. Can you feel it? <laughs> All right, here we go. We're, we're, we're going in. Whoa, we're going in. We're going in. And all of a sudden I felt myself going up. I felt my body being lifted up and it was moving really fast. And then he was like, can you smell it? Mm -hmm. There it is. Can you smell it? That's what you said to me, Bob. And, and you said, it's the vanilla. And right when Bob said the vanilla, I said, I smell vanilla. Such as Bob Jones really spoke. Now, Bob Jones, it's interesting. Bob Jones also claimed that he, by, he had the power by his faith to fly to heaven. Yes, he could, he could, him and Todd Bentley, Todd Bentley is another one. He's the one that came up with the idea that the Holy Spirit told him to kick a lady in the face with his biker boot. I walked up and I grabbed her legs and I started going, be healed, be healed. I started banging them up and down in the place. She got healed. And I'm thinking, God, why is not the power of God moving? He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. And there's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. Bam! Bentley's another one. He's the one that came up with the idea that the Holy Spirit told him to kick a lady in the face with his biker boot. So they were having lunch one day. It was on the Patricia King show. And Todd Benning decided he wanted to visit heaven. And of course, Bob Jones said, well, don't you have faith, my brother? Or something like that. Anyways, so what happened was they decided they wanted to visit heaven. So they, by their faith, they just, they held, they, they took hands and then they flew, floated up to heaven, into the third heaven. And um, Bob Jones um, a lot of people believe that Bob Joan had the ability to fly to heaven at his, according to his faith, and took Todd Bentley there over lunch. Really speaking, we see the Gabriel and the the comment, comment quite, com, coming in May, and many more testimonies. There's the entire prophetic history is in question. Yeah, you could say that again. Sadly, people actually believe that. 
We'll get to um, the white chariot, or sorry, the golden chariot flying to heaven and uh, the black horse of accusations in a second. Burden of the families. I am making this statement because of the pain. And by the way, there is freedom in Christ Jesus our Lord. The mind of wisdom. It, the sermon of spirit, wisdom is a spiritual gift. We are to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. All this Looney Tunes, it's a false prophetic. I come from the Pentecostals, all right? God speaks today. The spiritual gift is not flying to heaven according to your faith over lunch. It's ludicrous. But there is a false prophetic out there right now. People like Bob Hartley using prophetic weapons against women as well. All right? It's a false prophetic. All right. I am making this statement because of the pain and burden of my family endured in continually having to answer questions. Did Mike really say God told him? I am pained by the intense pressure that my total silence, specifically on the issue that caused our natural family and our spiritual family. <coughs> Excuse me. This false narrative is an assault against our prophetic history. So if, if Mike Bickle was watching this video right now, I believe that he would say or if he had an opportunity to comment to my video, he would say that my video is a attack against his prophetic history. I think he would say that because I reject it. The false narrative of the, the assault against the prophetic history that caused much pain and turmoil in our staff by forcing to answer to their family, friends, and supporters. It has resulted in much pain in the relationship and significantly lost the income. Oh boy, financial to some, and thus has greatly affected their personal life. This is not okay with me. But all of this phony baloney narrative, him trying to save his prophetic history. Oh boy, what happened? What happened here? Our prophetic history is a true God story, according to Mike Bickle. It is not uniquely my story, but our story. It is our story. So this whole thing is designed to protect his false... Yes, this is Diane. This is a powerful... Generational story. I don't know why that's doing that. Sorry. Yes, this is a powerful generational story. Our place in the prophetic history is is real regarding how Lord, Lord, Lord leads me in the future. Some might ask, why would I ever talk about a premature death of loved ones? The biblical narrative of the end... Okay, here we go. Makes it clear that... End times makes it clear they will die a natural disasters, famine, pestilence, violence. Thus, an, a natural death of loved ones to the one, the primary conversation of human family in the years leading up to Jesus' return. One of Satan's main agenda is to cause people to be offended at God's leadership. One of Satan's main agenda is to have is to cause people to be offended by God's leadership. I have spoken in many settings over many years and many different people about the coming of the death of the loved ones and need to be offended by Jesus' leadership as it occurs. I have processed the pain of our four premature deaths in my immediate family. I have processed how to seek God's excellent leadership and face. I saw the premature deaths. I care intensively about the subject. It's personal to me. The Father's heart must be seen. He deeply cares about the pain, fear, and confusion that so many of his children will experience in the days to come. He has a good plan already in place, but we must wrestle with it to gain understanding and peace. I am confident that the end-time bride will tenderly and boldly cry out, I love you, Jesus. I trust you, perfect leadership. I am not offended into your hands. I commit my spirit. You are worthy of all love. This is our family declaration. Pray Ephesians 1. So, what a bizarre statement this is. What I When I read this, when I read this, this is a master class of manipulation, of misdirection, and somehow 
Well, you you know, and that's where it is, is that I can tell you that Mike Bickle is a false prophet, but it has to be the Holy Spirit that reveals it to you. Bob Jones and Todd Bentley didn't have the faith to fly into heaven according to their faith over lunch. Now, the prophetic history. And I'm done with this video. We will read the Bible. We'll look at Mike Bickle in a second, but... Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that we believe what is false in order that they may be contemned who did not believe the truth and had pleasure on righteousness. It says, therefore, God sends them a strong delusion. I've wrestled with that. Is it why if somebody's in a strong delusion, if they believe what's coming out of IHOP KC, people like Stephen Strang is under a strong delusion then, you know, I've wrestled with it. And, um, you know, the prophetic history, the reason I've wrestled with it is that I want to see people set free. I want people to accept the true and living God. And I've just wrestled with that Bible verse because there comes a time when you are so wrapped in spiritual delusion that you're gone. You'll never get it. You're, the judgments of God are the false prophets and the false apostles. People like Chris Reed that believe that, I just did that video, that there is a 2,000-year-old Apostle John living in a cave in Turkey. And you say, well, why is he living in a cave in Turkey? He's connected to IHOP as well. God has kept a 2,000-year-old Apostle John alive in a cave in Turkey to explain the book of Revelation. He's saying this in multiple videos at Morning Star Ministries. Why would anybody in a million years ever accept such a delusion? He believes that. He believes that. He's preaching poisonous teaching to God's children, right? And, and for Christians, you're like, why would anybody? It's like a five-year-old would say there's some 2,000-year-old. Well, it's actually interesting that the Church of Latter-day Saints believe the same thing. Back to Mike Bickle. You know, when I, since studying Mike Bickle and the IHOP KC and the prophetic history, you know, there is a strong delusion over the, well, what's his name? Like a great example. Where's my Twitter? I'm going to, oh, we should do that too. One second here. I'm done with this video. Where's my Twitter? God bless Elizabeth. Um, there's a few things. Dr. Michael Brown. Um. Dr. Michael Brown came up with this. Dr. Michael Brown, he just posted this yesterday. No, two days ago. So the question was, let's not litigate the accusations against Mike Bickle on social media. I believe without social media, Mike would be back in the pulpit by now and no one would know about a tenth or whatever we do now. And in fact, that's in fact exactly correct by this person, third, par <laughs> third party and armchair investigator is, is reaching out to Dr. Michael Brown. Dr. Michael Brown says, not a chance. In fact, without lots of social media distractions, the investigation would likely have been completed properly by now. Now, I'll try to be as sensitive as I can, but that is absolutely false, Dr. Michael Brown. It's, all right. In one point of fact, the great majority of accusers have not come forward yet and are waiting for the formal investigation. That's equally as shocking. According to Dr. Michael Brown, the great majority haven't even come to light yet. They haven't even had their day to tell or to get any type of justice or healing of what Mike Bickle has done to them. That's shocking to me. I believe the public pleasure is the only reason why anything is happening. Dr. Michael Brown is blaming the, the social pressure and not the responsibility of the IHOP AKC. And I also said, in reflecting to the accusers that Mike, Dr. Michael Brown is a great majority of accusers have not come forward. I said, according to Dr. Mike, many Christians who are concerned regarding Mike Bickle's behavior have not come forward yet and are awaiting a third party investigation. 
Accuser is Satan in the Bible. Accuser should never be used to describe teenage girls harmed at IHOP KC. All right. Everybody wants Mike Bickle to repent for his prophecy weapons that he used at the pulpit at IHOP KC, spinning his narrative and lies of the back course of accusation, he how he was flown up to heaven into the throne of heaven. He was commissioned by the the inside the throne of heaven by my Lord and Savior. Right? He's not prophesying the name of Buddha, Muhammad, Bahala, false religion leaders, false prophets, Joseph Smith, Ellen G. White. He's prophesying blasphemous lies in the name of my Lord and Savior. You know, and take it personally. And, um, you know, wouldn't that be an incredible testimony if... But it, where, where it comes down to is that there are certain individuals that if you want a false prophet, you can have them. And I believe what it says here, therefore God sends them a strong delusion. Part of that, well, here it is here. Let's look at it. The coming of the lawless one is the activity of Satan with all power. And do you see this, what it says here? False signs. They are lying false signs and false wonders. When Todd Bentley stands on a stage and says the Holy Spirit came upon him and said, why is that lady not getting healed? And he's claiming the Holy Spirit said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. That is a false sign and wonder and all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. See, they, it doesn't say they didn't know the truth and be saved. They failed to love the truth. And that's where there's... All in with this is that the psychic service industry in the United States and all over the world, if, for psychics, for horoscopes, angel number, angel board... You, there's there's prophets online that will tell you what your the color in your dream represents and what your odometer license plate the secret messages from your Walmart receipt messages are horoscopes here in Canada we have false prophets that the the what is it the Capricorn half fish half goat man represents Isaiah fifty three the age of Aquarius water bearer represents the Holy Spirit. And because of double blessing, open door, double door, new beginning, purple sunshine, the year 2020, because of Bob Jones' birth date and the Kansas City Super Bowl prophecy means the open door, bubble door, new blessing, purple sunshine prophecies. You're like, wait a second. Yeah, that is the false signs and wonders, the false prophetic, the apostate fortune tellers that would never make it inside the, the psychic, psychic industry, but because they pick up a Bible and speak and spew out blasphemous heresies, they're accepted. And why are they accepted? Well, we might as well do that. I'm done with this video. I have to hit the street. Where is that? That is Timothy, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4. <laughs> they, all right, they. It says here, For a time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears. Do you see what this is there? They, they will accumulate themselves teachers to suit their own passions and turn away from listening to the truth and wandering into myths. So when it says here, they, the Looney Tunes horoscope readers cartoons is another one i've done lots of videos regarding a, the inspired priest you know this is all right so we'll do that if you don't know what the inspired priest is this is the inspired priest and at that event bob jones uh he often would minister to people and and he would uh he would designate he would talk about the fivefold ministry using his head and he would talk about this finger representing the prophetic, um, this finger representing the evangelist, this is the pastor, the teacher, and he talked about the thumb, which touches all, as being the apostolic. And at that time, he gave me a prophetic word. He said, you've been operating 
And this is the term he used. I'd never heard this before. He said, you've been operating as the inspired priest. And, and he, he went like this, the inspired priest, the, the prophet teacher, the teaching prophet, the pro prophetic teacher, you know, that, that thing. He said, but he said, but this is coming along in your life. The apostolic is developing. And he said something to the effect that the seal of your apostolic authority will be love. And in sign language, this means uh, I love you uh, or something like that. So I thought that was very interesting. And so anyway, that's been coming. And, and Joanne McFadder, Dennis Weedrick were doing the worship and Bob Jones and I were the speakers. And at that time I was um, operating, he said, he said, he does this thing with the fingers in terms of the fivefold ministry. He said, he said, you've been operating as an inspired priest, the teacher prophet. And he goes, these, these two fingers, you know, this is the prophet and this is the teacher. He All right. So he's teaching Canadians that according to Bob Jones, this is a man named Mark Breeze. Well, he's a dominionist. So the idea is that they're going to dominionize the world. They're going to take over the world. They're going to dominionize it. And um, the, of course, the great wealth transfer. So trillions and trillions of dollars will be stewarded by Christians because he's a dominionist. There's going to be paradise here on earth. There is no tribulation. There's no seven-year tribulation. I'm pre-mill, pre-wrath. So in, in his imagination and what he's teaching Canadians, according to Bob Jones, the dominionist mandate, the inspired priest, prophet teacher, that's the secret hand signal of the inspired priest and in this network here the dominionists are going to receive uh, trillions and trillions of dollars to dominionize the world and um that's what they believe and that's where we're at i'm done with this now he's also using x-men my little mermaid um uh, portal movies lord of the rings and comic books uh, as a prophetic picture. So I've done these videos where the idea is that you go and watch Satanic Hollywood and because God's releasing vibrations, this is all connected back to the Kansas City prophets. Interesting videos if you go watch them. His theology is that the cartoons of Lord of the Rings, Portal movies, is a prophetic picture because his book, this might sound crazy, you have to go watch these videos. <laughs> His book is called Metaspheres. It's an angelic blueprint in order to take dominion of the world. Very interesting theology. And I study religious movements. And his religion, of course, is... I don't know if... Where's my... Uh, sorry, I don't mean to get on a tangent here. But uh, Kat Kerr is another one. She uses a Gandalf stick to command the weather. There's Charles T. Russell. And um, I think I did a video regarding the Metasphere angelic blueprint of the portal openings what they want to do is they want to create a you know what i think i might do a video regarding that here it is here hollywood movement prophecies you know the earth is still under a curse and so they get ideas about this but but all of these movies came out about portals and it was the beginning of a revelation to the church okay, about so how keep going i want to all back it up this is a critical point of the presentation of the update video on the cartoon prophet Portals is the beginning of the revelation to the church. This man literally is claiming on social... He wants you to watch this. It's on public domain. Literally is saying that God, a revelation to the bride of Christ, God's children are portal movies. All right. I don't want to take more context. We'll listen to a little bit more. Hypnotized and brainwashed by Satanic Hollywoods. So there's a portal movie. The idea is that, sorry, if you don't know what open theism is, is the idea is that God has restricted himself in order for in order for Christians to dominionize the world and get all the money and take over the world in the seven mountains. They have to open up an angelic portal opening for the angels. And because it's an interesting study, and I'm done with those videos, and... Um, this is the horoscope readers. There's, I've done all these videos. There's my friend Mike. Mike overdosed last year. And uh, I'm a, I do this on my free time. So thank you for watching. Leave me a comment. Like the video. And if you haven't watched some of my other videos, you can go watch them. I'm on my way out the door from my morning street outreach. So may the Lord bless you. Keep you strong in the faith. And always remember, Brother John, I love you.